Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And today I want to talk to you about identifiers in Python. What we often call variable names or function names or module names or class names or any other sorts of names. Really, at the end of the day, these names are all the same in Python. They're simply names referring to objects. And whether those are data, strings, lists, tuples, something else, functions, methods, modules, classes, they're all objects in Python and names can refer to any of them. And those names, well, they're generally known as identifiers. It's kind of a fancy term for it, but that's what they are. So what I want to talk to you about today is identifiers in Python. First of all, I want to talk to you about, you know, what is a legit identifier? Let's make this a little smaller. Number two is I want to say, what are the conventions for identifiers of different types? I'm going to try to keep this relatively short, but this will probably be a long-ish video just because there's so many things to deal with. So first of all, right, identifiers, you know, what, you know, can they be called? And the answer is basically any combination of, we'll say here, letters and numbers and underscores, right? So you're going to want to use underscores, but we're going to talk about all this different stuff. Now, when I say letters, in theory, any Unicode character, any Unicode letter, I'm sure there's some that are not acceptable, like punctuation, I don't even know. Don't do this. Please don't do this. It's kind of cool to show off. But really, like, don't do this. Numbers except as the first character. And then underscores can be anywhere. We're going to talk about these because these are kind of special. So basically, I can say here, for example, you know, x equals 100. I can say x3 equals 200. I can say x, you know, a, b, c, underscore, d, e, f, underscore, 1, 2, 3 equals 10, 20, 30. All of those are totally legitimate. But if I try to say 5x equals 100, Python's going to say you can't do that because it's going to think that five is beginning a number, as it says here, invalid decimal literal. So generally speaking, generally speaking, that's how we can do it. But what is the convention for them? And in Python, we normally use snake case. That means lowercase letters and underscore between words. So let me show you what I mean by that. If I say here, for example, def hello, first name and last name, return hello, first name, and last name. Right, so here I could have called the variables, of course, first and last. But I call them first name, last name, all lowercase letters, underscores between them, and then I can say hello, you know, out there, which is not really a first name and a last name, but it will work, and that's what we get. So it is typical for most identifiers in Python, the ones you're going to be writing, call it 90% of the time, to have all lowercase letters and underscores between the words. That's what's known as snake case. But there are some exceptions to those. First of all, class names. So these are normally written in camel case. All right, now what does that mean camel case? It looks sort of like a camel. Okay, it doesn't really look like a camel, but it has that hump in the middle, meaning that we're not gonna use underscores between the words, but rather we're going to connect them together, sort of smush them together, modern startup name style, and we're gonna have capital letters to indicate where the words begin. Um, and by the way, there are some languages where they use camel case where it's a lowercase letter at the beginning. In Python, it's uppercase in both cases, both cases, haha. So if I were to say here, for example, uh, you know, I would say class, uh, you know, uh, uh, small company, def, you know, in it, self name, and we'll say here, self company name equals name. And here you can see that we're using camel case for the class name. And that is typical. Does Python enforce this? No. Do you need to do it? You should do it. You should do it. And as I like to say, it's not like the Python police are going to pick you up and arrest you for not using camel case on your classes. But this is a convention that's very strong in the Python world. It'll help people to understand your code much better. And here, inside of the method, we have camel case, I'm sorry, not camel case, snake case for both the variable name and the attribute company name. All good. So what we've seen now is we're going to use snake case most of the time for function names, method names, attribute names, and variables. We're going to use camel case for class names. But wait, 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 let's go back to that underscore because underscore is a little odd. And we've already started to see it poke its head out here and there. For example, in this dunder init, we're going to get back to that in a moment. So you can actually use the underscore as a variable by itself. 
So if I say here, you know, underscore equals five, what is underscore now? Five. Don't bet on this. Underscore is supposed to be a temporary var variable. You should not really expect to get its value back later on. I certainly don't. There are many, many people who like to use underscore as like a dummy variable. That if they say, for example, you know, my list equals 10, 20, 30, and they want to say first, you know, garbage, last equals my list. So they're going to use, um, you know, this is unpacking or what's known as tuple unpacking. So first is going to get 10, last is going to the last one, and underscore will take what's in the middle. Now, I personally don't use underscore for this. I would say call it something like junk or throw away or something like that, but people definitely do this. And you can have it be, of course, any type. So if I say here 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, then I can say first splat underscore last, and then first is going to be 10, last is going to be 60, and the underscore is going to be a list with all those in the middle. And again, we use the underscore to basically mean, I don't care about this, throw it away, someone else is going to overwrite it. And there are different places in Python that will sometimes write to underscore. Quite frankly, I don't remember what they are. But like, again, you shouldn't be caring about it because you shouldn't be expecting to use that value. It's sort of like a write-only variable. Write into it and then like, whatever. Sometimes I see people use underscore if they're using an iteration. Like if they say here, for underscore in range three, print, hooray. Right? So I don't really care about the value that I'm getting back from range three. I'm just trying to say, whatever, right into that variable. I'm never going to read from it again. But the underscore plays a role in some other places as well. And we already saw it. If I say here, class person, def under init, self name, and I say here, self dot name equals name. Well, if I say now p equals person, Ruben, I can say, well, let's even do a def greet here, self return. Let's do a hello self.name. There we go. That's a little friendlier. And then we can say print of p.greet. All is good. So what is this dunder in it? And I should say this is Python slang. Python slang where we say dunder in it means double underscore before and after in it. Yeah, that's much more cumbersome to say, right? So dunder in means double underscore. You have the two underscores before and you have the two underscores after. What does that mean? Well, dunders, these, these things, you know, dunders, if you define a variable or function or method, right, with a dunder name, you're basically saying that you want Python to use or um, set, or well, basically use this value at some point, at some specified point in you know the program's uh, execution, as per a specification. What do I mean by that? Meaning Python looks for particular dunders at particular times. And if you have defined it, then it'll be used. So dunder init, for example, is a method that if it's defined is run right after an object is created. So the object is created, dunder init, if it's there, it's run, and that its job is basically to add attributes. If you don't have dunder init, that's okay. I mean, it's a little weird, but it's okay. And Python will simply use the default dunder init in object or in whoever your parent class is if it's not object. So there are lots and lots of dunders out there. And so, you know, in classes, you can define lots of dunder methods, some sometimes known as magic methods. Right? So you can say like dunder uh, int for convert to int, and you can say dunder eq for equality, and dunder add for plus, and there are just lots and lots of uh, dunder uh, len for length, and dunder, I'll stop here, stir for turning to a string. And there are just lots and lots and lots of these, and lots of new functionality in Python is actually implemented using these dunder methods. Could you define a dunder method that Python doesn't know about? Could you say like dunder ice cream? You could, but it's a little weird because Python is not expecting ice cream. I mean, it might be nice, but it's not its birthday. No, Py Python is not expecting a dunder ice cream. And so if you put it there, like it'll work, but no one will quite know what to do with it. And Python certainly won't look at it. And there are also dunders, by the way, in modules. If I say, for example, import random, and I say dir random, in addition to all sorts of other stuff to find in random, you're going to see a bunch of things that are dunders here. And these are special names that are defined on the module object. So these are not methods. These are rather values, attributes, even variables inside of the module object that are defined so that they can keep track of all sorts of module -y things. 
whether the, you know, with the loader and the name and the package and the caching and all that other stuff. So there, you're probably not going to set it. You definitely should not set it. But there, you might use it, you might read it, you might be familiar with if dunder name equals equals dunder main, and then you can check to see whether your module was the first one to be loaded into Python or not. Two or three other things. Python does not have constants. But we pretend we do with all caps. So if I say here, right, name equals Ruben, right? So the type of name, it's a string, right? We pretend that if it's all caps, it's a uh, constant, meaning we're not going to change it, but we could change it. I could say name equals someone else. Done. Python won't complain. Python will give us a warning. Python will just go and do it. If we say print name, it's someone else. So just because we call it a constant, it's a convention. Okay, something else. What if I say here, underscore x equals 10? What is this? So we could say it's a perfectly legitimate regular variable. But actually, by convention, variables that begin with a single underscore are considered private. Will anyone enforce this? No. But if you go into code and you see there's an underscore there before a name, you should almost certainly not use it unless you're really, really confident of what you're doing. There are a few places in Python where a single underscore is at the beginning of a name, and we all know, yeah, yeah, we can use it anyway, but that's really rare. Typically, if you see an underscore at the beginning, don't touch it, don't use it. Assume that this might break, the, break or change in the future and that you want to deal with it. By the way, I should add, when you say from module import star, which you should never do. But if you do say from module import star, against my rules, against my advice, then anything will be imported, all the names will be imported, except for the things starting with underscore. So those are kind of sorted, sort of seen as private in that way. But you shouldn't have to worry about it because you shouldn't be doing from import star. There's one more place where people see things, which is kind of weird, right? So if I say here class person, and I say here def in it, self name and i say here self dot name equals name and then i'll say like self dot i don't know uh double you know underscore bank equals well let's do it this way bank I'll say here bank so if i now say p equals a person and we'll say ruven and i'm at bank little me that's my local bank so if i say p dot name i get back name if i say p dot double underscore bank wait it's not there what's going on so this is something known as name mangling. And people often believe that it has to do with keeping things private. It does not. It has nothing to do with keeping things private. The basic idea is that if you start with two underscores, start with double underscore, and then what Python does is it changes the name, meaning that it will be changed to underscore class, double underscore name. So if I now look, I say dir of p, we're going to see that there is an underscore person, double underscore bank. Now that's super weird, right? Like it's not hidden at all. I can say p dot underscore person, double underscore bank, and I get the bank name. So what, why would I want that? The idea is basically that if I have a subclass, or if, I'm, if I have a subclass that has its own state, that it has its own attribute, and I worry that someone in a superclass will have the same attribute, or vice versa, this is probably more common, that I write a class and I'm worried that one of the subclasses that inherit from me will want to use the same name for an attribute, then I can put that double underscore there and inside of the class, the name mangling is automatically undone, right? So I can say here, def get bank, don't do getters and setters, but I'm going to do this anyway, return, you know, your bank is, and we'll say self underscore, double underscore bank. And then if I do this, I can do p dunder, you know, dunder bank there. It was not really dunder p dot get bank. And this works just fine. So inside of the methods, inside the class, the name mangling is undone. But outside the class, it becomes this long thing to avoid any possibility of there being conflicts between them. Okay, this was a lot. So we've got snake case. We've got camel case. We've got what is legitimate to, for use as an identifier. We've got underscore by itself. We've got dunders with two underscores at the beginning and end. We've got one underscore at the beginning, making it private. And we've got the double underscore at the beginning alone for the name mangling. 
At the end of the day, though, all of these identifiers, all these names, just as I said at the beginning, refer to Python objects. And it's the objects you should be worried about. Also, if you think it's weird that Python doesn't really have private or protected, well, it's because that's the philosophy of the language. The idea is that we can't really stop people from looking at things, even in a language with private and protected. So let's not try. Let's try to keep things open. Let's try to keep things available. Let's try to encourage people to write APIs that will uh, stop us from feeling the need to look around and get into the private stuff that we shouldn't really be touching anyway. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope it was useful and informative. Don't forget, I have a very active Twitter feed. I have a free weekly newsletter about Python called Better Developers, and I'll be back here soon with yet more videos about Python and pandas and all that other good stuff. See you here soon.